Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. We are, uh, are pretty blessed tonight to have uh, Tony Langdon with us. Uh, we also have Dale, VK5ZSH, with us, going to help the presentation. Tony, VK5AU, UA, UA uh, is going to do some nuts and bolts for us at the end. Would you say a quick hello to us, please, uh, Tony? Yeah, okay, good day, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me uh, just on uh, Zoom for the time being. And uh, yeah, you got uh, a fair bit lined up. Um, but uh, yeah, of course, it's been a long day here and uh, half an hour later on uh, this part of the country. Uh, I hope you get something uh, out of the presentation. And uh, yeah, Dale and I have come up with a uh, a rather different way of doing things today uh, with uh, Zoom as a backup. Anyway, it's working well, and I just want to welcome our Zoom guests um, and um, Ben VK5BB, Charlie VK5BC, David VK5LDR, uh, DL. 4FC, uh, Jens, uh, good on you. Uh, Glenn Mossett uh, from uh, Williamstown. Uh, and uh, Kimberly Chase, uh, Mark, VK5QI, Rob, VK5NR. And we've got some visitors here tonight. Could you please stand up and make a bit of a noise, please, if you haven't been here for a while? Good on you, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, Anna will be on Zoom. Yeah, Arno swap seats. He's normally on Zoom, co-host, co but uh, he's here in person. Uh, and any anybody else, uh, a warm welcome to you all. Um, so that, that's cool, fantastic. All right, um, Tony, what would you suggest we go to the um, uh, PowerPoint at this point? And um, what what would you prefer? Uh, yeah, um, oh, is. Yeah, Dale, about because we were originally going to do that over the radio. I'm not sure um, how that will translate with all the Zoom, uh, and uh, yeah, not sure. I've got Dale a lot. Laid it. Yeah, we can we can still do it by radio, and uh, Dale can tell me to push the next slide, um, and I can put the mic somewhere near the radio uh, speakers. So I think we're going to make a reasonable noise. So we can try it without your face and voice on Zoom, and if we can't, well, we'll get you back. <laughs> okay, I'll go across. I'll just mute myself here. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, for those that uh, aren't able to see us on Zoom, if, you've got, if we've got people elsewhere, I've also put a link up. Uh, it's at files.vkradio.com. There's only one file in there, so you certainly can't get the wrong one. Um, that has all the slides. Anyway, I'll mute and uh, I'll uh, give Dale a call and see how we go. All righty, good. Okay, you're up, Dale. And uh, oh, haven't you? Oh, right. Okay. Um, if necessary, we can just do it the old-fashioned way via Zoom. Or, all right, Dale uh, and uh, Tony. There, that might be our fallback position. Um, all right. Okay, go for it. Um, we, um, uh, I can. Uh, I can just have you uh, just on the side there and uh, we can see you in the corner there while you're speaking, Tony. So away you go. And I, I just yell out, yeah, next, and I'll move the slide on. Yeah, not a problem. If I do disappear, uh, 
have someone by the radio just in case because I may have uh, I have a, an unusual stability issue that I've had, but the CPU load settled down. So anyway, um, as you can see, going to do a uh, bit on uh, voice and radio over IP with a bit of historical context. Uh, look at a couple of the, the digital modes, in particular DMR and M17. And uh, the last bit, solving the Tower of Babel, is uh, the systems I've built to allow these different modes to communicate with each other. And, uh, okay, what's going on here? Just, oh, yeah, there we go. So if we go to the next one, next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just waiting. To, yep, there it is. Uh, uh, so I'll talk about some early experiments, uh, go through the analog systems that most should be familiar with, uh, then talk about my involvement in the digital modes, uh, go into a bit more detail about DMR and M17, and then uh, what I've termed the VK multi-mode network, how it started, and uh, where it's come to today. So if we go to the next one, next slide. Yep. Okay, so back in the early days, I've been on the internet since uh, um, late 1994. And by 1995, I had a um, PPP connection and uh, the uh, voice over IP had started to hit even in the days of dial-up. So uh, one of the earliest packages that was used with amateur radio uh, from the mid-90s as a uh, piece of software called Internet Phone, which has uh, been uh, gone for more than 15 years. Um, it was one of the early successful uh, on the modems of the day. Uh, closed source Windows software. And as early as about 96, I think it was, Amateur Radio was starting to make use of it um, with some repeater links appearing, uh, particularly in the US. And there was a companion app, which I can't remember the name of, uh, that you could um, load up. And if you're licensed amateur, you could be given access and use that app to... Uh, allow your copy of iPhone to access a uh, repeater on the other side of the world, which back in 1995 with a 14.4K uh, modem uh, was uh, rather magical, to say the least. Around the same time, I was also playing with an open source uh, public domain application called Speak Freely. Uh, quite flexible, a little bit harder to drive because it gave you access to a whole heap of compression and uh, other options, network options uh, and encryption because uh, it's on the internet. And uh, that was quite a successful piece of software in its time. Uh, while not used as much, you can still find copies online. And in 1997... Uh, that software actually became the basis of IRLP, which still today uses a modified version of the Unix Speak Freely. Next slide. So we go on to uh, the analog radio over IP systems that are still in current use. Uh, there's three of them. The first one to come was Internet Radio Linking Project. Uh, this was actually a direct result of the problems with Windows of the day, which is um, mainly Windows 95, and we all know how stable that was or wasn't. Uh, so Dave Cameron, V7LTD, uh, built IRLP. He chose Linux for its stability. It was, as far as I know, the first system built specifically for amateur use. And as I said, based on a modified version of Speak Freely for Unix, which it still uses an even more modified version today. And uh, one of the things about IRLP, which has caused 
some disagreements over the years, but IRLP has a philosophy of keeping the radio on amateur radio. And by that, the only access allowed to the system is uh, via a radio. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's two metres, 70 centimetres, whatever, as long as it's an amateur radio uh, entry point to the network, uh, you're fine. Um, later, some exceptions would come to that rule, but uh, not for nodes, only for reflectors. Uh, the next system, uh, I first saw it in around 2002, was Echolink, which we all know and love. Um, that's based on Windows, of course. It allows not only radio access, but direct access via a PC and or smartphone. Originally, it was an improved client for another system called iLink that was developed in the UK and defined the basic protocols, but Echolink was so much a better client, it quickly uh, took over and eventually became its own network. Uh, uh, there were some stuff going on at the time and basically out of it, iLink just disappeared and Echolink uh, took over that network. And over the years, software for Linux and other platforms has become available and much of that is open source. The third system, is All-Star, we uh, uh, based on the uh, asterisk open source uh, VOIP telephony package. Uh, I couldn't get an exact date on that, but it was in the early 2000s. Um, Jim Dixon, I think his call sign was W6NIL uh, or similar, is now Silent Key, but uh, he came up with the idea and uh, built it around an early version of that software. It is still using an earlier version of Asterisk than uh, is currently mainstream. And uh, all three systems are quite uh, popular today, particularly Echolink and Allstar. So next slide. Get into VHF, UHF, digital voice. And yeah, I could talk about the modes, but I'll talk about how I became involved. Uh, I've given some dates there from roughly my first involvement with each mode in somewhat chronological order. And the first one, also the first one to market was D-Star, uh, developed by the uh, Japan Amateur Radio League and marketed by uh, primarily ICOM. Kenwood did have some radios and there's been some uh, other third parties have built various devices over the years. Um, I first got involved in 2007 with an IC91AD. Uh, that's it there. I still have that radio. Um, it was a month or two before the first gateway in Melbourne came online, VK3RWN, and we were hanging out on Simplex on uh, 145, 125, uh, and then VK3RWN came along and uh, learned the ins and outs of D-Star the hard way. Um, first, all the ICOM-based call sign routing as defined in the original protocol, and uh, then along came D-plus and reflectors, and um, everyone just found reflectors much easier to use, and... Uh, that's what we use to this day, except there's now uh, multiple types of reflectors uh, from the original. Yeah, the original closed source uh, D plus reflectors to uh, today's multi protocol XLX reflectors uh, that have uh, become quite popular. So that's my involvement in D Star. I'm also a member. Well, actually, I've uh, just been offered life membership of the Victorian D-Star Users Group for running the reflector that keeps everyone together. That's uh, uh, 023 Charlie, a uh, very popular chat channel across the country. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've still got involvement in that mode. Next one's DMR. 
I first got in 2014. Um, actually, I've been interested in it for a while and uh, I won a couple of Hytera handhelds in a Facebook competition. Who says you don't win anything off Facebook? This was actually run by the company themselves. And the condition of winning was I had to do a review on their radios, which I did, uh, mostly in analog mode because no DMR infrastructure here at the time. And when I attempted to travel to Melbourne, uh, the uh, repeater in Melbourne was down and I couldn't reach any others. So the review was a bit limited, but was able to show them as a very solid uh, commercial grade, basic but commercial grade handheld and that really held up well in central Melbourne where my... Uh, 91 AD that doesn't do too bad was struggling a bit. Uh, since uh, COVID, I did get involved in DMR, uh, but was active on VK DMR for a while, a little bit on Brandmeister, but in recent years I've gravitated to the uh, more open networks like Free DMR, Freestar, and the like, um, where I still appear occasionally today. And uh, I now use a uh, an Anytone uh, 878. Um, also during COVID, I wanted to diversify. I uh, got myself a FT70. Uh, can I reach it? Uh, I'll see. So yeah, FT70 B. Uh, nice little, pretty reasonable bang for the buck. Fusion handheld and uh, haven't done much with YSX, but I have done a, a fair bit with the open source YSF network through uh, my own systems mainly and occasionally uh, someone else's. And then we come to one of the more interesting offerings, uh, M17, uh, which uh, contrary to what the name suggests it's got nothing to do with rifles. It's actually named after the uh, address of the radio club in Poland where it was first developed. Uh, M17 uh, was something I read about on, I think it was the DV switch group on, uh, on um, groups.io. Uh, and uh, I did a bit of Googling and discovered that M17 is a completely open, open source, open hardware, open specification, uh, digital voice mode for amateur radio. Um, and that in itself caught my interest. And I quickly became involved in the M17 community, uh, first as a lurker, then uh, a chatter and uh, I've graduated into uh, the occasional uh, bug testing and also uh, I'm uh, called the uh, Australian ambassador to M17 and give presentations. Uh, next one coming up in two weeks over here at Rosebud. Uh, no live stream, but you will be able to watch it after the fact as a recording. Uh, they promised to record it. The other side of digital voices, the hotspots and gateways, the uh, hardware that connects these things via the internet. And I've played with a few, uh, the DV repeater, an open source uh, D-Star unit from the early 2010s, um, which I use as a Simplex gateway uh, in those days. And I have a second one that has an AMB board and can be used as a modem to turn any 9600 capable radio into a D-Star radio. Uh, only problem is I can't find the software to program it, as in uh, set up the routing and that, but the actual board itself will run by itself once the routing's configured. I've also got an open spot one, which is one of my D-Star hotspots uh, that sits here in the house. Um, I've had that since the mid 2010s. I've used it on uh, D Star, Fusion, and DMR, but it spends its 
time full time on uh, D Star XLX 432D. And finally, uh, MMDVM, both the radio modem and the hotspot, which since about 2020 I've used extensively. Um, these can use any of the digital modes, and the uh, modem version can also do analog FM, making an FM DV repeater possible. And I have several of these uh, scattered around the house, uh, most of them running on various modes um, that uh, allow me to just pick up a radio and uh, get onto the various networks uh, without having to do too much effort. And one modem is also the heart of the repeater that I have, which is currently off air until I uh, get my antennas up and then uh, look at the paperwork. So uh, next slide, and if anyone's got questions, I'm happy to take them, however, either at the end or if someone's got a burning question, I don't mind answering in the middle. So we get on to the first of the highlighted modes, DMR. I'm sure most of you have heard of it. A lot of you probably play with it. And it is uh, one of the more popular modes these days. It's actually a commercial mode that in amateur tradition, tradition has been repurposed for amateur radio use. And uh, several different DMR networks exist worldwide. Um, amateur use of DMR is tier two, which is conventional mode. TDMA, uh, time. Time division multiple access with two slots. Uh, if you're running in uh, repeater mode, the two slots can be used independently. Uh, however, simplex systems, simplex gateways can only use one time slot um, because of the uh, limitations. Uh, but yeah, repeaters and duplex hotspots can use both independently. As I said, number of DMR networks, uh, Brandmeister. Doesn't seem to be as popular here, but it is big outside of Australia. Um, not my personal favourite, I won't go into that here. I used to use a bit, but I tend not to use it very much now. Uh, BKDMR, which is the uh, Australian entry point into DMR+, Plus, uh, has been quite popular around the country, although I've heard less so. Um, I haven't really had much access since I took the repeater off here late last year, but I was fairly active on it uh, up until that point. Uh, free DMR, one that I do use quite a bit. Um, that's one of that's a fairly laid back uh, network. Uh, the you know, the admins are, are pretty easy going, and uh, you are allowed to experiment a bit more. Uh, similar on uh, Freestar. Uh, which has two networks, it has an IPSC2, which is structured much or designed much like uh, the VKDMR type network, and System X, which is more like Free DMR in its operation behind the scenes. Um, I do spend a bit of time on System X, uh, not so much on their IPSC2 network. I'm a bit less familiar with the offerings there, but the System X I do use from time to time. And another network with a following is TGIF, which does stand for, thank God, it's Friday. If you uh, look up their website, they obviously thought that sounded good. Uh, I have heard of another one called QRM, which is an interesting name, but I've never been on it and uh, not familiar with it at all. Uh, so there's other networks. I don't know if Dale's got a radio in his hand. Uh, can someone tell me over there? He can't. He can have very quickly. Apparently, do we have some lights on, please? Uh, so Dale can see what he's doing. Yeah. Well, if Dale wants to come up on free DMR nine six nine, I'll give him a call. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. You okay? 
He's up, yeah. so we'll see how you go. VK5, ZSH, VK3JD. You hear me, Dale? VK5, ZSH, VK3JD. Any luck from Dale on that end? No, he's not getting it on the mobile. No, so that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunate. Uh, I know I did check everything was working this end. Free DMR was up. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh well, we we had hoped to uh, demonstrate DMR, um, but uh, not to worry. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, yeah, Kimberly, uh, Kimberly had a question. Uh, do you want to come up, Kimberly? Yeah, KJ Seven OML oh, here. Uh uh, well, I do have a connection to FreeDMR and also uh, Yaesu System Fusion, if uh, you want me to try that. Here you go ahead, Kimberly. Uh, yeah, you, come, you got DMR if you come up on that. Okay, that wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Um, yeah, I haven't got the DMR radio in, within arm's reach, so we're actually going via Fusion, but the audio is identical, so this is actually what DMR sounds like, uh, even though we uh, didn't quite get to do it. Yeah, well, that works loud and clear. Uh, as you can see, we can access uh, DMR over the phone as well. Um, actually, I could change talk groups and do the same thing. Uh, yeah, let me uh, change the uh, talk group. Let's do 969. And yeah, I should be able to hang on a sec. Uh, KJ seven OMO VK three JD coming in via Zoom, no audio. Uh, okay, we'll try that again. Is that working? Yeah, that's better. Um, I am now on DMR on nine six nine. Uh, VK three JED KJ seven OMO loud and clear from uh, free DMR nine six nine. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and key, uh, Kimberly. Yeah, sorry about that. I forgot to ask you. Ahead, Dale, VK5, ZSH, VK3, JD. VK5, yeah, okay, Dale, yeah, I'm on uh, Talk Group 969 on free DMR, and uh, we're giving away a few spoilers, so we'll go back to Zoom. So we'll go to the uh, next slide here on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, I need to get it back up to full screen. How to do that? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, aren't I? Help. <laughs> I can't see. Can I, some... Can I get the right? <laughs> yeah. Setting is a more. What's it look like? The two arrows squeezing out on Zoom on the right side. <laughs> there, oh, there. Okay, yeah. Right. There we go. Right. 
well. And you'll probably have to st- resume the slideshow. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Uh, where's that? Oh, up the top, is it? Yeah, it looks like it. At the... oh, I, might, I, yeah, might... I think it's the present button. Present. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've... Are you yeah, we've suddenly lost everything. Yeah. Other I... than... No, I knew that, but... Down, down, yeah. Okay. And now, now go to Where's that? I can't see it. Uh, Technology is your friend. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just using the ones on the side. I think it, I think the screen's covering up my display. Um, that's my problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to go to the menu. Uh, yeah. There we go. That's worked. Yeah. We're back onto normal now, Dale. But I can hear you. Okay, so we come to M17. As I said at the start, M17 is the first mode to be built from the ground up by the wider amateur radio community. It's also the first completely open VHF, UHF digital voice mode. So if you're, you know, a Linux like <laughs> open source uh, <coughs> person, uh, code, whether you're a coder or uh, some other part of the open source movement, you might find um, M17 attractive. Um, all software, firmware components, as well as hardware implementations are completely open and able to be reproduced by anyone. M17's features include 100% open source and open standard, including the vocoder, which is the only mode that has a truly <coughs> open source vocoder. Um, uses codec 2 also by another vk5 uh, dave david rowe vk5 dgr so uh, there's a bit of vk5 involvement there uh either at 3200 or 1600 bits per second um it has m17 has full rate voice where voice is the primary payload uh, there is some data call signs uh, gps position data and a few other things half rate mixed voice data and packet mode which is basically data only uh, so they're the main modes of operation uh, m17 uses uh, call sign addressing it's not unlike d star in some ways including the uh, ssid letters on the station ids and modules on reflectors but it's uh, quite simplified and a lot easier to use, including features like implicit disconnect. If you want to go from one reflector to another, all you have to do is change the destination in the destination field, and the gateway will automatically disconnect you from where you were and reconnect you, and you don't have to uh, go to uh, change your destination oh, oh. to communicate. Oh, you can leave oh, oh. Leave it on the oh, chosen destination. Cold. Yeah, could you put my slippers on, please? I will come. Hang on, okay. You promise? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like Wyson, et cetera, where we are allowed to use it for that role and training. Uh, the encryption is uh, AES, uh, so yeah, fairly solid, robust. And the big selling point for a lot of people is uh, a vibrant open source community. It's very active uh, all over the world, a lot of great people, a lot of fun actually just to be involved. And uh, I spend a lot of time on their Discord. Okay, so uh, implementations for the end user. So I'm not going to go into the, the reflector side, but if you want to set up M17, um, if you just want to get in from your phone or your computer, you can use Droidstar, which is available for Windows, Linux, and Android. And there is a new version for iOS, but uh, requires a bit of jumping through hoops, which I haven't gone into myself so I just use it on Android uh, Invoice is a Linux client that's a reference implementation by the M17 team uh, which you can build and install yourself and the fun part if you actually want to get on radio and Dale may be able to show some pieces in the background um, first one is M17 client uh, it's Linux-based piece of software. It requires um, either um, an MMDVM modem and a data-capable radio. And uh, I don't know if you can see yeah, down there, there's uh, an MMDVM with M17 client on it. And there's an FT818, which is the radio I use for M17. Um, so uh, that's the first option, and that's one that I've used a number of times. It, it works quite well. Uh, or you can use an M17 hotspot as a low-powered M17 transmitter and a transceiver. Uh, with M17 client, of course, you need a, a suitable host uh, with uh, those as well, Raspberry Pi or with a USB adapter, you can use a, uh, a Linux PC. Then there's a TNC 3 and 4. This is a commercially produced unit or the Nucleo TNC kit. This here is a TNC 3 with the test firmware. That's capable of doing M17. Uh, in practice, because it's older firmware, it transmits really, really well. Uh, but receiving is a bit iffy. I think the TNC4 has got vastly improved firmware and it works really well from all accounts. Uh, again, used with the uh, radio like the FT818. So I've hooked that up to the 818 from time to time as well, just to test. And I will have that one in action, those two in action uh, in two weeks at at the uh, Rosebud Radio Fest. Third option is you take your PC, can be Windows, can be Linux, install a piece of software called M17 Tools and interface that. You can use it, a digi rig will work or you can direct interface that to a uh, data capable radio and you got yourself a pretty much a fully software M17 transceiver. Uh, so that's a, a cheap way to do it. Uh, again, M17 tools is available on GitHub like pretty much all these others. Uh, another interesting one, have you got the MD, the uh, RT3S there, Dale? It's uh, one of those. Um, uh, MD380, 380 UT, UV, RT3 or RT3F radios you do some hardware mods to them um, and you install open rtx firmware and you've got yourself an m17 handheld that you can carry around with you like any other handheld and it'll do m17 okay thanks. and the other one that i know dale's got there is the module 17 ah, which is <laughs> Yeah, the module 17, which is a uh, a modem board 
that goes with said radio, 9600 capable radio, and you plug in a mic and speaker, and again, you can use that to talk on M17. Um, so yeah, Dale's showing it off there. And they are said to have excellent audio quality. I haven't heard it myself, but from the early test reports, uh, uh, very good audio quality on those. So they so yeah, they're ways of getting on uh, M17. Uh, next slide. Um, just to finish off. Uh, we deviate from the radio side and we move into uh, a bit of background infrastructure. Uh, what has now become the VK multi-mode network has evolved over a number of years. Uh, unknowingly at the time, uh, but the first stage was um, IRLP reflector 9550 to 9559. Um, which also contains a number of echo link conferences uh, such as VK3JED conference, VKMCOM, uh, Aussie, AM, Pride, just to name a few. Originally, I set up in 2009 to um, facilitate development of second generation integration between IRLP and echo link. Uh, this is to build a conference server that can transparently service both networks. So it has a, a call sign on Echolink and it has an IRLP reflector number. And these work very well. Um, it's, so that's been around a long time. And around the same time, I got D Star Reflector 023, D Plus Reflector installed on that system and to this day it still runs on site so that was phase one and things stayed like that for more than 10 years second stage when i got involved in digital voice modes of course none of them can talk to each other um you know there's wonderful things about standards so many to choose from so i found dv switch and other bits of software and I started building a multi-mode reflector um, as one of those things you do when you're in lockdown, as we were here for a long time here in Victoria. Uh, for COVID-19, you do play amateur radio, tinker around with stuff, and uh, I uh, built this multi-mode reflector. Um, Echolink, IRLP, actually no, IRLP wasn't on at the time. It, yeah, a bridge to one channel, All Star, uh, DMR, Fusion, D Star, and uh, that was about it, I think, at the time. Uh, because of the D Star software, I ran it on two virtual servers. One did all the transcoding, the other hosted the reflectors and the All Star node. It worked okay, but it could only service one network. And uh, I was looking for better ways to do things and someone put me on to Docker. But at that time, the Pride Radio Group were looking for a home and uh, this reflector that was pieced together became the core of the Pride Radio Network. Uh, but that was one network with those modes. The P25 was there as well, just looking at the lists. Um, plus all the other ones I mentioned. And I did add M17 at a later stage and put a, uh, um, a simple link across to IRLP 9550. Next slide. Yeah, we'll go to the next one. Got a technical itch, have we? <laughs> Is that okay, Tony? Uh, anyone uh, at the radio club? Yeah, there we go. So, uh, we'll go back one, back to back a slide. 
Yeah, I have a shot. Yeah, this one. So what I did in more recent times, uh, the uh, main transcoder uh, set up, uh, as well as All Star and the DV digital voice reflectors were built on a completely new server. Uh, this time I based it around Docker for all but three of the components. Um, this actually allowed me to uh, consolidate everything into one server. Uh, the D star issue was not a problem because everything can be given its own internal IP, much like your network at home. Uh, and the whole thing became more modular. I could add, you know, a transcoder here, a particular type or a reflector of a particular type there just by uh, adding Docker container. So it became a, a real set of building block modules. All of a sudden, I could add new networks with a, a fairly straightforward process. Um, the design of these things is very repetitive, so adding in new networks, a bit of a copy-paste change exercise with some configuration files and uh, hey presto a new network pops up because uh, the majority components sit in the docker containers to build the network and uh, i can add you know channel you now module reflect the module to it on m17 or xlx or uh, an all-star node uh, i can add that to the all-star server it now supports, so last count I did the other day, eight independent networks, each with its of different configurations. I know two networks are really alike. Uh, they've all got differences and different mode capabilities. Um, some can do just about every mode. Others are limited to a selection of modes, depending on uh, the needs of each network. Each network is individually configured to meet the needs of it uh, and uh, the links to IRLP were originally done with All Star and RTP but I've moved to some experimental software that runs a USRP bridge uh, which is more reliable and easy to manage and there is a link on that site for system on that page or slide for system information and that link if we go over is also on the next slide and if Dale wants to pop up we can do some demonstrations um, pick a mode Dale what have you got yeah you, you go on YSF uh, VK5 ZSH VK3JD Okay, three, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 other things yeah so we'll, we'll have a bit of a play around on my end uh so how do i stand on d star yeah 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 i was on um the uh, ic 91 AD, I've now switched across to all stuff, going in on uh, analog FM, uh, just uh, to be different again. So that's uh, FM on my end. Three, 
Yeah, unfortunately, someone else connected and uh, trashed the uh, received audio. Uh, so I didn't get any of that. Uh, I got All I got was an announcement from uh, the All-Star node. So yeah, if people want to avoid coming and going while we're doing this, that would help. So that was another one on All-Star. Uh, 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 you were trying to remain on your droid star, uh, on droid star there. Okay, now I am on droid star. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound the best, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll turn that off. That'll probably help. Uh, that's M17. It actually sounds a lot better when I use a radio. This isn't the uh, best tablet, but uh, this is uh, M17 on uh, Droidstar. So uh, we've switched modes again. I just had a question. Did he mean by USRP? Did he mean the SDR? USRP, SDR? Can I? Yeah. I don't know. Don't want to interrupt. Okay. Uh, one more. This is uh, P25. Uh, so uh, I'm now transmitting on uh, P25. Uh, just one more mode. So this will be the last one, and then we'll go back to Zoom, uh, VK3JD test. So uh, there you go. That's sort of the capabilities of the multi-mode system, and the audio quality limitations were more to do with the end-user devices than uh, the network itself. So that's pretty much uh, all I had. Um on this slide, a number of links. And as I said, you can download a copy of this yourself uh, to peruse at slides.vk, or sorry, at files.vkradio.com and grab the PowerPoint file there. Um, and you'll get all those links. And yeah, any uh, questions, uh, go ahead. I guess we'll need an MC on your end to uh, direct the traffic. Yeah, um, well, there might be some questions here. I'll take the mic to uh, to them if they'd like to put their hand up, and we'll go from there. Tom, you had a question. Yeah, hello. My uh, my question was by USRP. Did you mean the the USRP SDR? Uh, no, USRP in this context is a protocol originally developed. Uh, to talk to the SDR from All-Star, uh, but uh, it is now used as a uh, generic um, interlink protocol because uh, it can carry PCM, audio, uh, PTT and uh, carrier sense information along with uh, call sign metadata between the uh, various modes. Uh, thank you. Good. Oh, any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Kevin, VK5, KKS. Yeah, good day. I was just curious. Um, this is very in depth. Is there something like a, uh, a network diagram where you can see point A disappearing into the, uh, the cloud, as it were, and then point B at the other end? Uh, is there a diagram oh, or something like that? I have attempted to show that in the past, and of course, it's all changed. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's uh, it's actually quite complex, and I'd have to do one for each separate network because the networks I carry are all independent from each other, and each diagram looks different. But uh, yeah, I remember doing one on pen and paper once ages ago, and it uh, quite a lot of blocks involved. Very good, thanks. Um, by the way, um, your um, 
Echolink was working on the weekend for Jota, so I think I used it on Saturday. So thanks very much, Tony. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Well, which one? <laughs> uh, I think it was just the... I've I, I got the VK3JD uh, link on my yeah, Echo. That, yeah, that one also does... Is that the Dash L or the uh, conference one? or? Uh, I th I think it just got me in, and then I went on to the uh, Jota uh, conference one. Yeah, uh, I, I looked up Jota and got got into one with about thirteen people on. So we had to wait our turn, but yeah, it was good to at least get it happening. And I think one of the other chaps from uh, Elizabeth was uh, was on Echo Link as well, so we had uh, Echo Link happening. Uh, so thank you for your service there, sir. Yeah. Oh, happy happy to help. Uh, a lot of the Echo Links that I carry are also. Uh, at a minimum available on IRLP and a number of them on other modes too. Um, no, that's yeah, good. If you look, if you look at the um, the bottom link on this slide that's showing on the screen, that'll is a uh, link in that called Networks, and that tells you all the different networks that are carried and what they support. That's great. Um, just one other question. Uh, can all these modes talk to each other? Because that's what you were doing a bit tonight, weren't you? I'm, I've got um, DMR and I, and I haven't got haven't got C4FM and I haven't got DSTAR. So how can we talk to each um, other? Only through networks like mine. They can't natively talk, but the network or the servers that, that I use, and there's others around, not just mine. There's also uh, like in Freestar, there's a thing called Module X that uh, does something similar. And there's a heap of other uh, multi-mode networks uh, of varying configurations around the world. You need to rely on something like that. Um, however, with some exceptions, if you've got an MMDVM hotspot, you can uh, use YSF to DMR. Um, so you can go in on uh, Fusion, come out on DMR or vice versa. Uh, that's Those functions are built into the hotspots themselves. You've just got to configure that that cross mode gateway right uh, if you've got an open spot three or an open spot four pro you can actually go between dmr or ysf and d star because uh, it's got the vocoder chip to uh, do the transcoding um, so there are ways to do it without the help of servers to a limited extent um, depending on what hardware you've got do you need to get a, a more up-to-date hotspot? I've got a pretty old one. Um, you've got to get a what a, a version Which, three or four. That's if it's an open spot. Um, okay. Whereas MMDVM, if you run uh, Pi Star or WPSD on your MMDVM, the uh, the DMR to YSF and DMR to NXDN functions are built in. There's also a YSF to P25 one as well. That's good. All right. We need, need training on that so we can all talk to each other. It's not a standard gauge railway, is it, uh, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> if you've all got to talk to each other um, and if you've all once, – once you sort of got multiple modes and multiple codecs, the only solution is something like what I've built. I can show you how to do your own. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, okay, good. Uh, you'll be there forever. Um, or I can host it for you. Yeah. Or, or, I can, or I can host it for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fair enough. Um, name, and, your, name your modes and... Um, yeah. Name, name your modes, register your IDs, and I can have it all up and running. It only, only takes an hour or two to do a complete network. All oh, right. Um, Dale was talking about the challenge for maybe our club to do a uh, chuck something on our repeater or whatever you need um, to uh, there's no DMR repeater in Adelaide currently on the uh, VK for a VK DMR system and uh, so um, can you throw some light into what it might cost and cost to run it and technical brilliance that we need to make it happen uh, yeah, basically, um, the, there's two ways you can go down that path. You can either talk to someone like Peter Brennan and get a uh, a uh, motor roller, and then he'll 
sort of uh, take you from there. Um, you'd have to talk to him to go down that road or whoever's in charge of EKDMR. You, it has been Peter Brennan the time I've known. Um, and uh, then I think, and then he'll hold your hand. Or you can go the MMDVM route, which allows a lot more flexibility. Um, but, um, yeah, the uh, MMDVM route, you need uh, a Raspberry Pi, uh, MMDVM modem board, a couple of data-capable radios and suitable for uh, using as a repeater, so 100% duty cycle on the transmit usual cavities etc cetera, etc cetera. so the rf hardware except for the fact that it's got to be data capable um is pretty much the same as any other repeater um then you had the mmdvm and uh use you know wpsd these days is more modern and up-to-date than pi star and then you select your modes and networks um and uh, a bit more expertise, but you get huge flexibility and you can even run, well, that one, you can also run FM as well uh, if you want to keep FM and have that link to All-Star. So you can do all sorts of things. There you go. And and the do you need a bottomless pit there, Tony? So you, you're obviously running some from your old place or from your work. You know. um, depends how good you are at scrounging and how much... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just depends on how good you are at finding bits and pieces and who you know and uh, you need a modest amount of money um yeah and also depends on the site like if you're putting on a commercial site where well, you need commercial grade yeah radios cavities yeah all that and pay for the labor to do it because you need riggers to put stuff up and so it all depends on your situation how much money you got and um what expertise you got uh, and what sort of site you're going to use. Whereas for me to throw something up here, a couple of whatever radios I can get hold of, I've got a few that can do the job uh, and a pole in the backyard antenna and a set of uh, inexpensive notch cavities is sufficient for this sort of site. And uh, I'm up and running plus the, the, um, the digital hardware, which, well, my raspberry pies aren't cheap anymore, but, and the MMDVM board's about, I think, 100 Australian. But that's not too expensive, the, that part of it. Yeah, so it all depends on your situation. Yeah, sure. We've got an antenna up uh, on on borrowed ground at the moment, but it looks well. We've got a happy land, happy landlord for us. Um, so uh, we're looking for medium term, no problems, but we are going to improve it. And while we're it's just a challenge while you're talking to us. It is um, just and and what and the cost of internet. I guess that varies a bit with uh, usage. Well, that's uh, whatever you can get, but uh, yeah, you'll uh, uh, ideally you want in, you, you will want internet to the site, or you can run internet to somewhere nearby and then use the wireless bridge to do the last leg. Especially as things that it's a repeater, it's high in the air, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, use oh, no. a wireless bridge. Uh, we got we got rich members here, so we've got a, no problem really at all. Uh, Tony, so that's all right. Um, just you did mention about Wyson and stuff like that, and I'm a member. There's quite a few members here that are members of Wyson, and and do you see some use for it in uh, emergency comms and uh, maybe uh, even data transmission? Uh, that depends on who you ask. Um, Obviously, when you've got something in your area, your good old FM simplex, yeah, or a data mode, the M17 packet mode, or voice with encryption may have uses on simplex. Uh, eventually, not now, um, but uh, yeah, lo local event internet's down. Um, where you got an event that's maybe in a remote area or. You've got remote stations that can get do the last couple of hundred Ks on HF, uh, but you've got internet coverage to that point, which actually happens a lot in the US with the hurricane reporting. Uh, you can use the uh, network modes to get to the general area and then uh, HF 
uh, voice or data to do uh, that last leg into the area without coverage. So it just depends. So I think I look at it this way. It's nice to have a full toolbox with all the tools and use a tool for the job. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions, please, gentlemen? And anybody from our panel watching on Zoom? No? Okay. Um, well, look, thanks, Tony. Fantastic effort to uh, come across the radio waves and uh, the Zoom worked really well. And thanks, Dale, also uh, for your uh, support. And uh, where there's a bit more technical things happening afterwards. Is that what you're suggesting with Tony? What were you hoping to do? Well, radios or whatever. You want some practical help with getting your radio sorted or uh, online or whatever? Well, I've got a couple of hot spots that I've got here running in the middle of the feed load. Uh, one of them will be the M17, unfortunately, we don't have any RF for that. Right. Um, and 3D Mark. For some reason, I can't look into it. 3D mark. All right, so you'll just do some personal demos here after Tony's finished. Yeah. All right, thanks for that. So thank you, Dale. And Tony, you're going to, the other Tony, uh, you are, no, you're no, going to. No, no. Dale said he wanted to do uh, some spade loads, so I bought some spade loads and All right, so we've got some spade logs if we need them. Spade. Okay. All right, Tony, look, thanks very much, mate. That's been awesome. Appreciate that. And I appreciate your effort with your own uh, networks that you're running. It's awesome for the hobby. So you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good fun. I just do it for fun. And uh, yeah, your uh, Docker was a real game changer because that's all of a sudden I've gone from one to eight networks and uh, actually uh, costing me less in hosting than the original system was costing. There you go. Good on you. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to talk some more and talk to your colleague. Who's the other VK guy that's... Is Peter does DMR. He's at Murray Bridge, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I think Peter Brennan, VK3TE, has been involved in the VK DMR scene for a long while. I'm not sure if he still is, but he was for, you know, he was sort of like the one up high and he's in the VK DMR side of things. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm, I've got a feeling there may have been changes in recent times. Uh, I actually didn't mind hanging out on that network and I do look forward, although they've made some changes that make it a little bit harder to find traffic, um, but I understand at the same time why they did that. Yes. Because uh, uh, it was causing some issues with uh, people tying up a lot of repeaters unnecessarily. Um, yeah. But um, Yeah, that was unfortunate. But anyway, it seems to have settled yeah, a bit. But, uh, yeah, uh, they've changed it and it's... But it, it, I think that's it's a bit of it's the nature of DMR too. It's you, you've either got static talk groups or you've got dynamic ones, and uh, yeah. Yep. And if you're using the Motorola stuff, uh, you're controlled by the network. If you're using an MMDVM, you can actually override the defaults <laughs> with an MMD. Uh, um, and yeah, it's. And you can also do wonderful stuff like uh, joining multiple networks and then transparently routing them. And, uh, yeah, that's the DMR gateway component. It's quite sophisticated, and uh, I use that to the max. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, and by the way, I did use DMR on Saturday. Uh, the VK DMR had about six uh, dedicated Joda rooms, and uh, they yeah. were... They worked a treat. I was using a couple of those on the weekend, so that was yeah. that was, and the quality was good. And yeah, it was good. Yeah, DMR is quite good for that sort of thing. Yeah, no, it's good. The other well, thing, I, if you if you know DMR well, and uh, you got a lot of quiet talk groups, you can actually uh, subscribe to them all and um, look at your radio and traffic comes up and uh, respond on the appropriate talk group. So yeah, it's. It's got a lot going for it in some ways, but it's also a bit different to drive than the other modes. Yep, yep, true. All right, Tony, uh, on behalf of NERC, we just want to give you a big thank you. Would you give them all a big cheer? And uh, thank you. And, uh, 
So, uh, and for our Zoomers, we want to thank you also for attending tonight and uh, hope you've had a good time. I have recorded it, Tony. I hope that's all right. And, yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And uh, so if anyone wants a copy, I'll try and get it uploaded onto a, uh, a drivey thing um, um, and uh, it make it available if needed. So thanks, everybody. It's been uh, a great day. Appreciate it. I probably, if it's not too big, I'll probably be able to host it myself. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the same place at the PowerPoint slides. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Okay. There you go. Well, I'll see what we can organise. All righty. Okay. No, Thanks, everybody. That was awesome. Okay. No Thank worries. You. Thank you. It... Thanks, everyone. I better head off. For it's getting yeah, late yeah. over here. Thanks yeah. Thank you, to you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so much. See ya.